There we go. Um, so why don't we start out with working group updates? I see that we have uh, Jessica here. I think Andy's on as well. And then uh, Georg is here. I mean, I know Sean will be joining a little bit. So I think this is pretty full coverage right now. Um, so maybe I'll just start with Jessica. Jessica, do you want to tell us what's going on with risk? I will try my best without Sean here. Um, but we have identified uh, the focus areas that we're going to use, or at least we are proposing to use um, for the risk working group. Uh, now that we've sort of identified all of those, we are going to open up the risk calls to other interested participants um, from around wherever. Um, I think that invitation, if I'm remembering correctly, went out yesterday via email. Um, Sean sent that. So hopefully starting next week, we will um, start getting some interested participants from outside the LF and this group to start participating in that um, and really get the ball rolling on actually starting to come up with the metrics that we're going to use and how those are going to be measured, et cetera. Do you, you, actually, I was thinking maybe in this chat or in the notes, we could put, um, we could just show people what those focus areas yeah. are broadly. Um, yeah, let me grab it from Sean's email. He had a good way of okay. encapsulating them. Okay. And then do you know if you're, if you can multitask, do you know if your <laughs> risk group is going to be weekly or bi-weekly? I found the focus areas, by the way. Okay. Uh, Jessica, just put them in the, the um, um, I don't remember what we decided, to okay. be honest. Okay. I think bi-weekly. I think we said bi-weekly. Okay. That's a good cadence, I think. Um, any thoughts from anybody on the call here from what Georg or Jessica put in here? I was part of the early conversation, so they're familiar to me. <laughs> I think Good. maybe as a background information that these focus areas were also validated already at the Open Source Leadership Summit where Sean had led a session and did some work with the participants in the session. Okay, mm -hmm. thanks. All right, and so I, I'm guessing kind of next steps is to really kind of work out the questions and metrics that are inside of each of these focus areas and then think about deployment, I'm guessing? Yeah. Okay, okay, that sounds good. Um, Oh, thank you. Um, Georg, do you want to? Oh, values next. Andy. Uh, Jessica, did you have anything else? I'm sorry. You're good. Okay. Um, Andy, you want to kind of tell us what's going on with, with value? These are our two, just so people know, our two newest working groups. So. Yes, I'd love to tell everybody. Um, <clears throat> let's see. Uh, we are a new group. Uh, we had our first a weekly meeting uh, last Friday. So uh, we will meet uh, online uh, Friday, uh, every Friday from 9 to 10 o'clock. That's Pacific time. And I just posted our uh, meeting notes in, in the chat, a link to our meeting notes um, from, our, from our meeting last Friday. Uh, super productive. And, um, you know, we've got a, a ton of metrics that uh, potential metrics and, and focus areas that we have uh, discussed. Uh, another thing that, that we have done is um, yesterday we submitted a proposal for a, a value metrics group talk at um, the Open Source Summit North America. And that's going to be in... Um, in uh, August, so we'll keep our fingers crossed about that one. And uh, beyond that, we just have a, a tremendous amount of material to dig into on the focus areas that we have identified. Um, the shorthand is there's there are a, a collection of what we call public metrics. These are value metrics that we can derive from publicly available data, GitHub repos, issue trackers, that sort of thing. 
And uh, we're also interested in trying to figure out ways to get at private data, things that are proprietary, um, things like uh, salaries, uh, labor rates, marketing information, that sort of thing. Uh, we'd like we'd like to have insight into both. We think that'll that'll give us a, a better uh, sort of assessment of value. Okay, of the two, is there kind of? I mean, you, this would be the first group that's trying to call some private data, as far as I would understand. Mm -hmm. um, so I think that would be unique for this group. Is there um, kind of a, a first pass? Is it looking at the public trace data? Is it trying to do these in parallel with one another? And well, the. Uh, in parallel, and the, the first pass is with the public data. So we know we, we know we can get at the public data, and um, the private data is really exploratory. We don't know we don't know, um, we don't know uh, what the reaction is going to be to people in space to sharing this data. Okay, Would you, are you asking for the private data to be shared publicly? I mean, no. is that kind of no? No, there are there are protocols that that. Uh, we will we will use when we engage with um, when we engage with folks about sharing uh, private data and and basically it's a it's a benchmarking activity it's it's kind of a common um, protocol that uh, I've seen done quite a lot um, you know in a lot of different domains okay. uh, and um, one of the things that I think we can get at that would be public would be what do practitioners in the space actually care about? And by practitioners, mostly we're focused on, I think we're gonna be focused on open source program offices. So these are offices, these are uh, people that are attached to large companies, companies like Microsoft, um, Netflix, Disney, uh, you know, many large companies have open source program offices. Comcast has one. Uh, there's a, I, I saw a video of a woman uh, from the Comcast open source program office yep. who is um, associated with chaos. And um, so one of the things that I think we can discover when we talk about private metrics is what metrics do people actually care about? And that is something that we can publish the, the actual values themselves Maybe not so much, but okay. we'll find out. It's a discovery process. And the last thing I'll say is um, we'd really love uh, participation. So if anybody on this call would like to join our group, um, uh, you know, uh, come to our weekly call and post issues on our issue tracker. Those are the best ways to get involved. Sounds good. Is yours a weekly or a bi-weekly? Cadence, this is going to be a weekly call okay. um, for the first you know, few months as okay. we sort it out. And then once we uh, sort of reach consensus around what our goals and objectives ought to be, then it's possible that, that we'll dial back and go, go bi-weekly. Okay, that sounds good. Um, all right, so then I guess just an update to both risk and value working groups, this is the participate page. And so we're working to, I think both of you are in the spot to kind of go public, right? To, to encourage more participants. I think you've kind of shaped out your thing. So in this participate page, uh, right now, the way it's set up, you can see we have the chaos community calls and then common um, GMD, which may change names here shortly in DNI, we're basically just gonna split the chaos community banner, that large banner into three, just like below. And it'll be the community call value and risk. We'll, so we'll get all that information in there for you. Um, I don't know if there's a pull request or, and I think it's just an issue sitting on the website right now. So, okay, that was that. Oh, thank you. Um, anything else, Andy? No, um, just, you know, I'm, I'm real uh, excited about the prospects here. I, I think, um, you know, I've, I've gone through and looked at a lot of the, the chaos software. It's uh -huh. really got amazing potential. And um, I think we're going to have a real impact. I'm, I'm start talking with, uh, with um, some folks up there to see what the reaction is. Right on. I appreciate that. 
Uh, all right, is common? Does anybody see Dawn on? I Here, can. Can you give an update about common? Okay. Um, so we have talked about the different metrics that we want to look at in common have started identifying uh, focus areas mm -hmm. with the metrics. And since we are meeting every other week, we will meet again next week to continue that work. Hey, you meet this week, don't you? Oh, yes, you're right. Okay. Um, do you have a, a sense of what those focus areas are right now that we could share here in this call? Not off the top of my head. Okay. <laughs> are they posted somewhere? I wouldn't mind back to the meeting minutes. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I wouldn't mind getting them in these minutes here. Um, and actually, could we do the same? I'm looking at value. Andy, could you do me a favor? Yes, what would you like? Um, are, do you, are you linked into the meeting minutes right now? Yes. Can you add the focus areas that you are broadly talking about in value? Yes. Even just at the bottom. You don't need like the whole, you know what I mean? Like everything underneath that. Yeah. But that would be helpful for these minutes here. I will do. Thank uh, you. Give me a second. Uh, oh yeah, yeah. I'll just I'll talk while you do it. Well, okay. I'm not. We'll, we'll just wait for you patiently to do this. <laughs> Sounds right. good. I'll. I'll uh, it'll take me a minute or two to to sure. summarize. Yeah, thank you. And for those, just so you all know, for those of you that have been joining, this is the in the chat is the link to the the minutes for today, and Georg is at, adding kind of the focus areas for common. Thank you, Georg. Um, Georg, did you have anything else while you're adding those? I'll skip over to Jesus with, I think Jesus is uh, The common metrics, uh, right now we are focusing on responsiveness metrics, geographic coverage metrics, and organization affiliation metrics. Okay. All right, helpful, thank you. Um, I'm gonna jump. Gary, would you want to talk about DNI right now? Are you prepared to do two in a row? Please do jump. Okay. Why don't I? <laughs> um, Jesus, could could you give us kind of an update on what's going on with GMD, soon to become evolution or life cycle? I'm guessing. Okay. Thank you. Uh, so first thing is that uh, we are changing name. And uh, right now, there is an open issue in the repository about the new name. So if you want to participate in the name that you think is more appropriate for the working group, just uh, go there and uh, write some comments. Okay. Um, with respect to the metrics, we are right now having a discussion on the right name for code review. Uh, there is some proposals related to whether you use code review or pull the quest or merge the and uh, once, sorry, <laughs> once we are done, once we are done with that, I think that we have the first ten metrics uh, ready to release. Okay. And I, I hope to make that clear in our meeting tomorrow. What were and, the two? Um, what were the two focus areas? Uh, that's for the code development focus area. Okay. Which is like half of the of the focus area. Basically, okay. those metrics ready to activity. And okay. now we are going to start working in the metrics ready to efficiency, uh, which I hope to to start working in them during the next week. Okay. And uh, and I think that's that's it. We had some problems during the last two meetings because of this difference between time uh, between switching time zones in Europe and in the states and. Uh, which means that basically we don't have effective meetings, but I hope that tomorrow we have that. Okay, good. I think, um, just so people know, I think we'll call it GMD for the time being. I think, have you moved to bi-weekly meetings? Not as far as I know. Okay, I don't know. Okay, I was asking. I, I thought but, you had. But I, I, couldn't, I couldn't join the last meeting, so maybe the, the people were deciding about that. Already. 
<laughs> I don't, we wouldn't decide without you, but. <laughs> yeah. well, I'm happy to have the, the weekly meetings in a way. Okay, sounds good. Uh, all right, cool. Thank you, Jesus. Did you have anything else, Jesus? No, only with respect to software, that there is a new release of the Mod Lab. I'll, I'll move to software in just a little bit. We'll finish yeah. out with you. Okay. Okay. okay, so, but. Um, Jesus, or Jesus um, Georg, do you have updates? Sure. Okay. The diversity inclusion work group, um, we reflected on our past sessions at conferences. Uh -huh. um, took some takeaways from that, planning future sessions at the Open Source Summit North America and KubeCon, and reaching out to people to get more community distribution. We continue talking through piloting metrics with communities and what is required of communities that want to start using metrics and how we can support them. We have advanced uh, the mentorship metric. So there's a pull request coming soon. And we, so, so those are the main topics we have been talking about. We started thinking about releasing metrics. It's at least on our agenda. And we also activated the DCO bot. Okay. Um, have you, so I, I guess I'll add two things. I know that the OpenStack survey is complete. The gender survey. So I think that's going to be something that may or may not be on the radar of DNI. I'm guessing it will be. Um, I think, I don't know when the last time OpenStack ran the survey, but um, so that's something that's important. I'm taking some notes here. And then have you, has there been any discussion? Um, I know that at the leadership summit, there was talk about the Hyperledger project Indy and about identity yeah. management. They have not uh, made any progress on that yet. Okay. I think there's a lot of potential in this just as a, as a tool to think about identity management. I could be wrong, but. Um, yeah, so I, I guess this is the first monthly meeting since we talked about this. So I'll just recap real quick. The Hyperledger project is building an identity management system called Indy, which can be used for distributed identities where users stay in control of their data. And one of the features they want to build into this tool is reporting or aggregate information about the user base. And they're interested in working with the diversity and inclusion working group to figure out how to request for demographic information and how to then calculate these aggregate measures. And the nice thing about this is what Matt already hinted at is once a project or community or government starts using the Indie project to manage the identities of their members, they will get the DNI metrics built in with that tool. That's my summary. Okay, thank you. Uh, all right, any, I think that's everybody on the on the working groups. Um, software updates. So hey, Seuss, I had stopped you before, but now I <laughs> I will open it up again. <laughs> okay, so just um, a very quick uh, uh, comment. We have released a new version, which is uh, improving basically the containers, which means that now the model lab is a bit more easy to run, especially with the secure container that you can deploy directly in the cloud. Are you talking and about like, um, like containers, like Docker stuff, like for install? No, no, no it's, it's Docker containers. Okay. And uh, there is one which includes all the servers needed to run the model up. I mean, Elasticsearch and MariaDB and everything together that you can directly deploy it in the cloud and uh, talks via HTTPS, which means that it's secure enough 
to deploy in the cloud if you want. Okay. And uh, and then there is some more support for uh, GitLab. The support for GitLab was already in the Marla, but was not complete. And now it's almost at the same level that we have. So both are quite similar. Right now. What does the new support do? I understand it's with GitLab, GitLab. but what does it do? GitLab. GitLab. No, I understand. Like what? What is the what is the improved support about? Which is uh, basically we were not dealing with with merge requests with oh, okay. and also not getting information about the projects, stars, and all of that. Okay. Now we are getting all of that information. So I would say that the level of support is quite similar to uh, GitHub. Okay. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Um, I'll just stop there. Okay, good. Um, anything else from the Grimoire Lab side, Jesus? No? Okay. I don't think has Sean joined? No, I know he has a meeting that's running over. So maybe if he comes in, he can give us some updates on Augur. Okay. Um, Moving right along, uh, Gayor, do you want to talk about the DCO stuff? Sure. The developer certificate of origin sign-offs that are required by our charter. We have activated the DCO bot that makes sure new commits have the sign-off. Um, 26 out of 29 repositories are already active. Uh, we are only missing the website repository, metrics repository, and Augur. With regards to the website repository, um, I'm just waiting on confirmation from Kevin that he is informed and knows how to use DCO metrics. We are waiting on the common working group, which should give their okay this week. Okay. Augur, I don't know. Okay, <laughs> I'll follow up. <laughs> uh... So thank you very much to all the maintainers who have activated the DCO bot on their project repositories and to have um, informed their contributors how to do DCO signups. Yeah, and I think if you have questions, I think Georg's taken some time. Where did you post the protocol for doing it? It's on every repository. <laughs> all right, perfect. Um, whether you're doing it at the command or via uh, an extension in a browser, it's pretty straightforward either way. So. Yeah, we also have a volunteer, Polaris Triple Zero, who is working on uh, adding it to all of the contributing markdown files. He's working with me right now on the verbiage. Thanks. I re really appreciate that. Thank you. Um, okay, so maybe we'll move to uh, any other comments on DCO? It's it's a pretty pragmatic issue. <laughs> There's not much to talk about. Um, so then with the uh, two issues that may take a little bit of discussion, release metrics timeline. So again, um, as we moved through the, um, the board meeting at the Open Source Leadership Summit, we're now going to be releasing the metrics to the metrics page on the website. Um, Gayor, you had a proposed timeline. Do you have that handy? Or could you get it handy? I'm loading up the email right now. Okay. We, I was proposing uh, final release August 16, which is right before the Open Source Summit North America and ChaosCon, um, with two weeks public comment period before that. So by the end of July, we would need the final versions from the working groups. And I'd also proposed a previous alpha release um, throughout the month of Ju June, or at the end of June to finalize the metrics and have more time to for feedback and revision and with the, throughout July. The pro counter proposal was to move this up by two weeks, basically release at the beginning of August, which gives us more time before ChaosCon and Open Source Summit North America to really fully distribute the metrics, talk about it, blog, blog about it, and so on. So that's okay. the 
proposed timeline so far. I say we stick with that unless there's any. So it would be mid July, need a final version from the working groups, two week public comment or two week comment period. Right? Yes. And type, typing here. And then maybe mid June have an alpha release, right? Is that about right? Yes. Okay. Um, okay, so I guess kind of from my perspective, I'm gonna, I think, kind of be the person shepherding the metrics out of the working groups into the web page. So there's just a little bit of a link that needs to be created. I'm guessing that Kevin will help and <laughs> Georg will help too, maybe. Um, so I, I, I think the question is, do we go to the working groups and and kind of ask how they plan on releasing? I guess I'd like a little input on on this, just process wise. Thoughts from anybody? So I find the release um, timeline reasonable. The only trouble that I see is that maybe starting around mid mid July, at least in Europe, many people are going to be on vacation, which means okay. that. If we need coordination work between the different working groups, that's going to be difficult to do in late July and August. So maybe and only maybe we could have some uh, like, like two weeks in advance from this timeline, at least okay. for a preliminary release, which could be good enough for coordinating and having a look at the differences, maybe same metrics in different working groups and stuff like that. Okay. So maybe um, during that alpha period in June, I mean, maybe that's when I can really be attending, I attend anyway, but attending the working group meetings and that's when we can start actually getting them onto the website and based on what you're marking in your working groups. So uh, maybe having a, a candidate release by late yeah. June so that at least we can set the names of the, of the metrics and the preliminary definitions and so on. Okay. Which ones are similar? No. Okay. And perhaps the easiest way is for me to just listen to what's going, what are candidates for release by the working groups, um, working with Kevin to get them on kind of a, getting, getting them on a website and then bringing that back to the working groups just to kind of see if we have confirmation. Mm -hmm. But maybe it's just a bit of a social process back and forth for a few weeks. Okay. Um, any other thoughts on this? Hello, Sean. You're muted. Sorry, sorry, I'm late. That's fine. Um, all right, that, that seems to work with me. So I guess maybe the call then is to um, uh, Georg on DNI and Georg on Common and Jesus on GMD and Sean on GMD and, and Risk. Risk and Jessica on risk and Andy on value to kind of start just in the back of your mind thinking what um, what would be candidate release focus areas and then what the candidate release metrics would be as well because Sean had pointed out that the released metrics need to have a, a worked out description page that's so that, yeah I think it's a good idea that we're not just releasing metrics that really have no details behind them uh, and if people need to see what those detail pages are, um, those are fairly easy to circulate. I can, I can share those. I think it's fine if the different metric groups want to have different criteria. I just think, you know, it'll be easier for us to make decisions about what we release if we have criteria within ourselves, at least. Yep, no, I agree. So, so I guess I, I think it's three things to consider for the working groups. What are the focus areas? What are the metrics fundamentally that comprise those focus areas? And then what are the details on those metrics? One, two, and three. Oh, well, for the case of GMD, I think that uh, in the first focus area for development is almost uh, really in terms of list of metrics. And we also have a template for the metrics. And we have like 10 metrics supposedly ready, ready to release. So that if other groups want to have a look at them, it would be nice getting feedback, including things that you find are missing. Okay. Or things that we should change or something like that. You're talking about the detail pages, right? No. Okay. Um, I, I, how about this? I'll make sure I'll track that down in GMD and I'll make sure to share that with um, the other groups. Yeah. 
Uh, okay. So, so okay. One, yeah. Matt, one quick question. Yep. With these metrics, uh, <laughs> what do you envision in terms of a, of a change process or a release process? Uh, are they are they open to changing as, um, uh, ad hoc, or do you want to go through a kind of a release cycle? So we'll have a, um, people can correct me if I'm reading this wrong, but we'll have a release cycle. So we'll have a, a regular cadence of release. And then if the working group would like to make changes to the, essentially the focus groups and metrics that were part of that release, go ahead. That's completely fine, but that's not a change that we'd see necessarily reflected on the web page until the next release. Thank you. Sure. Okay, so that will be like an intermediary release be between the ma major releases. Yeah, and, and I mean those, the, the work that occurs internally at the work groups is not necessarily um, made visible on the website. Yeah, sure. Okay, that sounds good. Okay. So uh, are we gonna de define like the kind of release models that we will be using? In terms of the cadence, like how often we would release? Well, the, like how often you, I think you said, uh, yeah, things like that, yeah. We haven't really talked about how often, unless, I'm, unless I've forgotten. Does anybody recall a timing on this? We have a discussion about three months. George, three months. am I right? We have talked about different time frames, three months, six months, yearly, but we really need to get the first release out and then take our learnings from the process and figure that out afterwards. So TBD. Yeah. Okay. Because that, that would also depend on our consumers, those who are consuming the metrics, how it's affecting their work style and things like that. That's a, that's a good point. Uh, okay, so maybe on the timing, just to be determined, that's all right, Armstrong, for the time okay. being. Okay. Okay. Uh, all right, cool. Any other comments on uh, release timeline? Thank you. This is very helpful. I, 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 th I think one of the things that's helpful to me is that we're, we're um, talking about this issue in shorter <laughs> increments of time. <laughs> so when it comes up, we're able to get through it more quickly every time, which means that we're all starting to get onto the same page, <laughs> which is good to me. Yes. <laughs> This discussion used to take about 40 minutes. <laughs> and I think we're down to about two, which is good. That's good. <laughs> um, all right, cool. And then finally, my last issue, um, maybe before we do that, Augur, Sean, did you have updates software-wise on Augur that you wanted to get into the minutes today? Hmm. I'm trying to think. Um, we have, we we've done a pretty significant release uh, of basically Git repo statistics um, with the new overview page that will compare all of the projects, all the repositories in a project group. So um, that's probably worth, worth noting. And that's available on the dev branch right now. We're releasing it to master pretty shortly. <clears throat> okay. Um, have you been doing Docker work as well? We, yeah, I mean, there's a Docker container available. Oh yeah, uh, I can't remember when the last time we updated was. Augur is completely downloadable and runnable out of the box on a Vagrant machine now. So you can you can just download it and run it much more easily. Uh, we did a lot of work earlier this spring right leading up to the Open Source Leadership Summit to make the newcomer experience more straightforward. And the work that we're slating through from now until the Open Source Summit in North America is really focused on consolidating all of the different sources of data into a single location. So we have more of a, of a service model where we can consume multiple different types of data uh, into a, a common repository. Okay. Okay. Cool. Thank you. All designed to make it easier to get started. Okay. Easier, easier to run fast on your own. Good. Uh, thank you. And then um, my last issue is currently the, it's about how the working groups work. And so the working groups all work a little bit differently. And so the way that DNI works is um, different than the way that common works. 
So for example, DNI has a DNI repository. They're, they're focused on that. They build their focus areas. How about this? A lot of the working groups follow the same focus area goal question metric approach, but the way they get that work done is different. Okay, so some groups want to use repositories. Some groups kind of want to use branches. Um, do, do we care about this? Is this something that we should be concerned about? I'm, I'm opening it because we have uh, whatever five different working groups at the moment, all doing really good work. I mean, I think the the process. I mean, I would say the process for the common group, which I think is, as I understand it, intending to use the main metrics repository and chaos uh, branch inside there to do their work or forks or something. I think that's you know having a directly fork repo off of metrics certainly makes it easier to get things back into metrics. Sure. But, but I, I think we've hopefully started to pass the stage where we rename things. And I think it's, I think it's where we rename things from what they are in the metrics repository that has caused, caused some early consternation. But yeah, um, I'm, I think we're gonna get a process down. And, okay. and uh, but I, I think, you know, the, the common metrics repository is gonna, the common group is gonna have an easier time getting their stuff in because it'll be a pretty straightforward Okay. Request straight from their work stream. There won't be an extra step in there. Okay. I mean, I, I think it's hard. My own concern on this is it's from a newcomer experience. It's hard to, when you have five different working groups kind of working five different ways and not totally different ways, but slightly different ways. Does that inhibit that experience at all? And, and should we be concerned about this? I've got, um, I can weigh in on this one. Sure. I think that um, if people are doing work well in a certain way, we shouldn't try to change it. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that it's, it's good. As, long, as long as we can standardize it a little bit so that people don't get confused, that it's good to have it in the way that they can do it um, on their own way. Okay. But I think there is certainly standardization in that the focus areas, goals, question metrics. And that is clearly the, the standard that's being carried across all of the working groups. Um, I'm, I, I mean, over on Hyperledger, we have uh, multiple ways to contribute. And just to your point, Matt, um, it is confusing and it does make onboarding much more difficult. So, um, and that's setting aside like the various ways groups on GitHub do things because we have Garrett and GitHub. So mm -hmm. yeah, it is problematic for us. Are you doing anything about it with Hyperledger? <sighs> <laughs> And if, and if so, tell me what to do. <laughs> uh, no, I mean, okay. we kind of let each of the projects run themselves. Uh, so we're not really doing anything um, okay. other than enforcing DCO on all of them. Okay, which we're doing, we have that standard as well. And if you, yep. you have the standard again of that goal question metric approach. Um, okay, I appreciate it, thank you. Um, I think that maybe, uh, but the thing to do is to keep all, all, uh, all of us informed about how the other working groups are working so that we can learn best practices and fix things that are working in other working groups and maybe taking advantage of Castrum to uh, serve different processes and different uses that we have in the working group, trying to find out whether it makes sense to import practices from other working groups. So to try to standardize to a certain level the things that are working, because I think that that's good. Okay. On the other hand, I agree with people that said, if, we, if things are working in a given working group, okay, that's fine. That's the way it works. As long as they don't diverge to match, that's good, I think. Okay, that's fair. Like one of the things right now is on GitHub at the, in the chaos organization, I don't think there's a repository for common. This is as an example. <laughs> They're in the metrics repository, but GMD has a repository, risk has a repository, value has a repository, DNI has a repository. Common kind of does in the sense that they're in the metrics repository. Okay, is that okay? Like, like okay. The, the metrics repository is not just the common space. It, it, yeah, that's the part that confuses me is that it's a, a working group using the common space that 
but I am in the project, so I get it. Yeah. So I'm not. I get it too. I think as a newcomer, it's confusing. But I don't think it's. I don't know. It, it's. Uh, I understand why they would do that. <laughs> so uh, I would do the same thing that we did in GMB, but I think that the, the people in the working group may decide. The main problem that they can see is coordination with other working groups that at some point want to use metrics too. Uh, and at some point we need to coordinate metrics there. So maybe that, that can cause some, some noise in okay. the future, not, not, not now. But uh, up to now, I don't think it's a big problem. No, I, I agree. And I think we can kind of keep it like coordinated at a human scale for the time being, just by talking. And maybe that's our our line of defense at the moment until it really becomes, to your point, that it's really problematic as working groups try to coordinate um, down the road. So, all right, I mean, I'll just throw this out here. I'm not asking for a solution today, or maybe the solution is just to continue to stay on the current path and just kind of watch. But just as a note, I'm, I'm trying to, I'm attentive to this. So I, I'm a newcomer, and um, uh, as, as a newcomer, I really appreciate the fact that chaos has a process. And, and to me, it's really nice just to drop in and not have to think this stuff through from scratch. If I can just ask the question, what is your standard and, and comply with that, it makes it really nice as okay. a newcomer. And also I know it's a lot of work to establish standards and to think about standard practice the way that meetings are held, the fact that you've got a note taker for a meeting, the fact that you've got a facilitator who sends out a, a, a notice in advance, the, the formatting of the meeting minutes. It takes a lot of time and effort to figure out what that is. And I, uh, I think it's really valuable to do that and to, to invest in that. And I think uh, you, you might almost want to think of appointing somebody to being sort of the best practices, you know, czar for, for chaos, uh, because I, I, I think there's a lot of value in it. Okay, no, I appreciate that, thank you. Um. This brings me to a topic that I very much wanted to also bring up, and that is the community handbook, okay. where the idea is to document how we are operating. The goal of the handbook is to document what are we doing right now and how are we going about doing it. It's, and then through this work, maybe having it written down how the working groups operate, we can then see what are the best practices that we want to adopt in other working groups and where do the differences make sense. Okay. And the status of the handbook is that it is in the governance repository. I can drop a link into the um, into the minutes. Okay. So we're just now getting this started, the handbook and there are issues and pull requests around it. And okay. I invite everyone who is interested to let me know and chime in. Okay, no, that's, that's a, actually that, maybe that's the, the best place to kind of advance this issue is from what I'm hearing you say, Georg. Okay, okay, good, thank you. All righty, um, those are my issues for today. Um, does anybody else have anything they'd like to bring up? All right. Uh, I want that, to, oh, there is. <laughs> I, I want to harass Sean real quick about the DCO on the auger. Oh, go ahead. Uh, oh, did I didn't, uh, did, did, did you put a request into that? There is an issue, yes. Okay, I haven't, I haven't looked at that yet. Okay. It's not a problem, though. Harassment complete? Complete. Okay. <laughs> All right. Now, <laughs> with that, um, again, appreciate everybody's time. Thanks very much. Uh, and we will.
chat on a variety of different channels soon. All right. Bye-bye. Take care, everybody. Okay, bye-bye. Bye. -bye. bye.